Alright then gang, so we want to know how to log a user into our application. So, currently, on the sign-in component, if we add an email and password and press login, it's going to log that information, the email and the password, to the console over here. But what we want to do is we want to take that email and password and sign a user in using them. Okay? Now to sign that user in, we're going to have to make some kind of asynchronous request to our Firebase project to sign them in. And if we're making an asynchronous request, where do we do that? Well, we can do it inside our action creators. So let's make an action creator for signing. So over in the code, inside actions, let's create a new file. And that new file will be called authactions.js. Okay, so inside here, we'll export a new constant. And that is going to be called signing. So this is our action creator. And inside here, we'll take the credentials. And the credentials are just going to be the email and password, what we're going to sign in with. OK, so now because of thunk, we can halt the dispatch process and return a function instead. We take the dispatch as a parameter. We also take get state and we take a third object, remember, which we can destructure from and use get Firebase inside to communicate with our Firebase project. And we're going to use this to sign the user in. OK, so inside this function, what we'd like to do first is initialize our Firebase instance. So we'll say const Firebase equals get Firebase. So this will give us this Firebase instance so we can use it to communicate with our project and sign the user in. Now, the way we do that is pretty simple. All we say is Firebase dot auth, and that is a function. Then we use a method called sign in with email and password. Now, I always spell this incorrectly because it's so long, but that looks pretty good. OK, and then we need to pass in the email and password into these parentheses. So the email is going to be stored on the credentials because we're going to pass that in. So that would be credentials dot email. And we've not passed these in yet. We've not called this action creator, but we will do in a couple of minutes. Anyway, we need the password as the second parameter, and that will be stored on credentials as well. So credentials.password. So now we're using the Firebase authentication service to sign in with an email and password. And if that email and password is correct, then it's going to successfully sign the user into our Firebase application. And it's going to give us a response. Now, this will take some time to do, and it returns a promise. Therefore, we can use the dot then method, which takes a callback function. And inside this function, this is where we can dispatch an action, such as login success. So I'll do that. I'll dispatch. And the type will be login success. Now, we don't need to pass any additional data here. So we'll just pass in the type. And then underneath that, we can catch if there's been any errors. And same again, this will take a callback function and pass the error into that callback function. So this will fire if the authentication failed. For example, if the password is wrong or they don't exist, these credentials in our Firebase project, we're going to receive that error. Then we could dispatch a different action. The type of that will be login error. And we can also pass in the error as the second parameter. So we receive that in the reducer. OK, then. So now we've created this action creator over here, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So now let us handle these actions in the reducer. So save that and go to auth reducer because this is the reducer for any authentication actions. And we've already created the bare bones of this over here. But what we'll do now is just fill this out. So inside this reducer, we need to check the action type. And again, we'll use a switch statement to do that. So we'll take in the action type to evaluate. And then inside for the case where it's login error, we'll do that first. Then what we're going to do is return the state. Now, we could just return the state and nothing happens. But what I'd like to do is return some kind of authentication error on our auth object on the state. Now then, remember, this auth reducer inside the re reducer is associated with this auth property. So whatever 
we attach to the state inside this reducer, that is going to get populated on the auth property there. Not in the Firebase auth, but in our own custom auth property. Does that make sense? So what I'd like to do is attach some kind of error, some auth error to that auth property. So I'm not going to just return the normal state. I'm going to return dot, dot, dot state, which will take whatever's up here currently and spread them so we don't override them. Then I'm going to add on the auth error. So I'll make a property called auth error, and that is going to be equal to login failed. Now, if we wanted to, we could use the error attached to the action because we sent that over here. But for now, I don't want to do that. I just want to assign it a generic error, such as login failed. That will do for now. So in here, we'll create that property. So auth error. And to begin with, it's going to be null because we've not tried to log in yet. But then if we do get a login error action, then it's going to update the state. So the auth error is now login failed. OK. All right. So now we have the case of login success. So let's just scoot this in first of all. Then underneath, we'll say case. And this case is going to be login success like so. And underneath, what I'll do is I'll first of all console.log login success. So we know this has worked. And I'll do the same thing for the error, in fact. So let's paste that just above the return statement, like so. And we'll change this to error, just so we can see in the console what's happening as well. OK, so after that, what we'd like to do here is make the auth error null again because it's been a success. There shouldn't be an error anymore. So let's return this object and we'll spread the state so we don't override anything which we may add later on. And then we'll say the auth error is going to be null again. We don't have one anymore because we've logged in successfully. All right. Now, remember, at the end of a switch statement, we need our default case just in case none of these matched. OK, so let's say the default case is just going to return the state as is. And then what we can do is get rid of this final return at the bottom because it will never be reached. All right, then. So that's the reducer sorted. The only thing left we have to do is call this action create a sign in from our component. So then let's go to our sign in component. That's under auth and sign in. So currently when we input to the form and then click submit, what it's doing is preventing the default action, then just logging the state to the console. We no longer just want to do this. Instead, we want to actually sign the user up. So to begin with, we have to map some dispatch to props so that we have access to the sign in method. So let's do that. So to do it, we need to import connect at the top first of all. So we can connect to Redux and that is going to be from React hyphen Redux. But we also want to import this action creator right here, sign in. So let's now import sign in. And that's going to be from, and it's dot dot to come out of this folder, then dot dot again to come out of the components folder, then into store, then into actions. And then we want the auth actions. OK, so we've imported that as well. Now let's connect this component to Redux at the bottom. So down here, we'll say connect like so, and then surround sign in. All right, so now we need our map dispatch to props so that we can make a dispatch from this component and call this action creator. So let us say const and then map dispatch to props. And then this is going to be a function where we take in the dispatch and inside the function, we return an object which represents what we want to attach to the props of this component. Now, we want to attach the signing method. That is going to be a function and it's going to take in some credentials. So just creds. And then that in turn is going to dispatch an action creator. And that action creator, which is what we imported at the top up here, sign in. So we pass the creds in there as well. And remember, we receive those credentials right here. They don't have to be the same name, but these credentials are going to match to what we ever pass in here. So now we've done that, we need to pass this into connect. So let's pass in null 
for the first parameter, first of all, because that would be map state to props, and then for the second parameter, map dispatch to props. All right then, so now up here, we can access the sign in method from our props. So let's try that. Let's go to the handle submit, and instead of logging this to the console, instead, let us call this.props dot sign in and we'll pass in this dot state because that will be the credentials, the email and the password. Make sense? Okay, so let's save this and view it in a browser. Now over here, if we try to sign in with that dummy account that we created a minute ago, and remember that's in your authentication tab so we can see test at the netninja.co.uk and the password was test1234. Let's paste that in here and say test123 first of all. That's not correct. Let's see what happens. Login, and we get login error. Remember, over here in the reducer, if it's an error, we're logging that to the console. And what we've done is we've returned this on the state, this auth error. So I'll tell you what, why don't we, inside this component over here, sign in, why don't we map the state to props so that we get that auth error back? So to do that, let's do another constant over here, const map state to props, set that equal to a function, and inside here we get access to that state, and inside the function let's return that object, and we want to attach an auth error property to our props, and that will be equal to state.auth.auth error. And the reason it's state.auth.auth error is because, first of all, in the root reducer, it's stored on the auth property, because we're using the auth reducer, so that's why we say state.auth to begin with. Then in the auth reducer, the property is called auth error, which is why it's auth error right here. So now we're mapping this to our props. Let's pass it in as the first parameter down here. So we should be able to access the auth error now inside our component, inside the props. So why not? Why don't we output this at the bottom of the form if there is an error? So beneath the button, let's do another div and let's give this red text. So red hyphen text, and then also a class of center. Now then, inside this div, we want to check, is there an auth error first of all? Well, let's do a bit of destructuring to get that auth error up here. Inside the render method, I am just gonna say const, and then auth error is equal to this dot props. Remember, we're just destructuring the auth error property from the props right here. So now we can check if this actually exists or if it's null. So in curly braces, since we're outputting some kind of dynamic content here, we say auth error and then question mark, we're doing a ternary operator. So this is going to evaluate to true or false. If a value exists, such as a string like login failed, then this is true. We do have an auth error. If it's null, when there's no auth error, then it's false and we don't have an auth error. Now then, if it's true and we do have an error, we want to output that error. So let's do a p tag and then inside we'll output auth error like so. Does that make sense? And then colon for the false case, if we don't have an error, we'll just return null and so nothing is output. So let's save this now view this in a browser. And now if we try to sign up again, let's use test at the net ninja.co.uk and test one, two, three, not one, two, three, four, as it should be one, two, three, login. Now we get that error over here to say login failed. But if we change this to one, two, three, four, and then login, then we should see that disappear because the auth error should have gone to null. And we also see login success over here. All right. So in our reducer, when a login success occurs, we log this to the console and we set the auth error to null, which is why we don't see it over here anymore. So now we can see over here that our authentication status, if we look at the Firebase property, and remember we get this because we logged it out inside the nav bar, the authentication. So let's have a look at the Firebase. And now in the auth property, we can see who is logged in. The API key, the email of the logged in person, when they were last logged in, this is a timestamp, and the UID of the user, etc. So now we're successfully logged into the application.